So you thought the only immigration problem we had was at the southern border. You'd be wrong. Now we have to worry about Haiti. So I don't know about everybody else in the United States of America, but I'm not ready to have to deal with cannibals. <laughs> Haiti's government was overthrown not too long ago by its own gangs. They were led by a man named Barbecue. Got a clip from News Nation that I go into it a bit more. The violence in Haiti continues unchecked and getting worse. The country is now run by a gang leader who goes by the nickname or nom de guerre Barbecue. You can decide for yourself why that is. In Florida, they are bracing for a massive influx of Haitian immigrants. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says the federal government is not doing enough, so he is sending hundreds of police, state, and national guardsmen to the beach to intercept large flotillas of Haitians coming. So we're still facing more and more issues with people wanting to come here. They're not sending their best. There's been reports of cannibalism, mass sexual crime, ritualistic murders, you name it. It is some of the worst and most hideous things that you could imagine. I've seen some of the videos. The cannibalism things, that's true. I've seen the videos. I can't show you the videos here. You can look it up for your own self. But it's true. So this is what we're supposed to allow into our country unchecked. There are already people screaming that, you know, it's racist you know, not to let these people into the country. And I don't personally believe we should allow anybody from Haiti at this point in time into this country. We had to face off and we had to have a revolution of our own and we had to work it out by ourselves. It's time for them to fight for their own country. We have nowhere to run. We have to stay here if something broke down, right? We have nowhere to go. So I'm going to let Matt Gates explain to you what the actual problem is. Florida Congressman Matt Gates pressured military leaders on the Hill this week to take preventative action. Can, can I leave this discussion <laughs> believing that it will be your best military advice uh, to the administration to utilize DOD assets for this purpose? If there is a need for that. I would absolutely request it. All right, Congressman Matt Gates is with us now, member of the Armed Services Committee. Uh, is this actually going to happen, another mass wave of Haitian boat people? Certainly. Haiti is a failed state right now. The Biden administration officials I was speaking with couldn't distinguish Haiti from a failed state. And we know that is the number one push factor that sends thousands of people into the Florida Straits onto Florida shores. And here's the legal status of those folks. If we interdict them at sea, we are able to pull right up to a dock at Port-au-Prince as a consequence of our agreements there, let them out, and they are never part of the immigration system. If they make it to shore, they're able to claim that they fear their conditions in Haiti, they can seek asylum, and that further clogs that system. So, so basically what Matt Gates is saying is they can pull up, snatch them, and take them right back to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and drop them off. And that's exactly what they should do. We should do that at our southern border as well. Not so much catch and release, but catch and, and kick out. We should have it as secure where they can't get here in the first place. But we should have essentially the Coast Guard and Navy snatching these people up out of these boats before they even hit our land and drop them right back off where they belong. Because it's not just us. Now, if you think we're the racist ones, well, then you also have to call Dominican Republic uh, racist as well. Because they're not putting up with that nonsense either. They're collecting people that, that cross into their country illegally and taking them right back. For the people that don't realize, Haiti and Dominican Republic, that island is, is essentially cut in half. One side Haiti, one side Dominican Republic. Uh, and Dominican Republic is not having it. As Haiti's political future hangs in the balance, the neighboring Dominican Republic is cracking down on undocumented Haitians, rounding them up and sending them back to their country. ¿Qué pasó? They treat us like dogs, this man told us after he was released, adding we were detained since yesterday with no food, nothing. This is the fourth truck that we've seen here in just the past four hours. This is a scene that happens every day here at the border. Earlier in the day, this woman collapsed as she was being taken off an overcrowded immigration truck. Haitian-American Dana Josephs happened to be driving by put her in the back of his truck and rushed her to the hospital. There could be my family, but even though I don't, I don't even know her, so this is my car that I have to use just to save her life, I'll do it. 
these scenes at the border comes at a moment of desperation for Haiti after a coalition of Haitian stakeholders and international leaders, including the U.S. So as you can see, uh, they're not putting up with it either. We should never put up with it. Eventually, we have to just throw up our hands and let them fight their own battles. We can't keep becoming the safe place that all these traumatized individuals come to land. I mean, the people that are running now are essentially, you know, running from a war zone. I get it. I understand. It's scary. It's a scary, scary war zone for your country to be in such turmoil. But if we keep allowing people who who insist on turmoil into our country, we're going to have turmoil. I get it. Life sucks. It's unfair. I understand that you have you you were born into a horrible country, but we can't keep taking people in. We keep helping others before we help our own. Our people are struggling. They're facing horrible economic struggles right now. But we just keep on taking people in. We have no idea who's on these boats coming from Haiti. They could be cannibals. They could be murderers and gang members. Because they opened up their prisons to, to essentially, you know, cause chaos in the country. If I was one of those prisoners in Haiti that were just recently released by the gang members, I'd get on a boat and I'd come to the United States of America because they're less likely to throw you back in a jail. We begin in Haiti. A 72-hour state of emergency has been declared in Port-au-Prince and surrounds after armed gangs carried out two serious jailbreaks. The BBC has been told the vast majority of inmates held the capital's main prison have escaped, some 4,000 men. Gangs who now control much of Port-au-Prince broke into the jail in the early hours of Sunday. At least 12 people have been killed in the unrest. This latest upsurge in violence began on Thursday when the country's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, travelled to Nairobi to discuss sending a Kenyan-led multinational security force to Haiti. Over 4,000 inmates have uh, uh, fled the, the two um, detention centers here in Port-au-Prince and uh, creating a, a real security crisis. Some inmates we heard chose not to leave the prisons. They actually felt safer to stay. Well, safer and also legal consideration and also protecting their, their lives um, um, because uh, many of the high profiles, uh, especially the Colombians or uh, uh, people that were involved in the assassination of the president, some of them decided to stay uh, in order not to get killed in crossfires between the police and gangs or to have their sentence aggravated uh, as a result of fleeing the, the, the prison. So there are many implications for those who have actually fled. So I don't know about everybody else in the United States of America, but I'm not ready to have to deal with cannibals. So truthfully, we need to start taking this as like an invasion. We really do. We have it from Central America, uh, South America, uh, China, the Middle East, Africa, now Hades, now the island. At what point are we going to think about this as, you know, an actual encroachment on our freedom? And I know Matt Gates and, and John DeSantis and a couple other people are on the side of, you know, dropping these people back off. It really needs to take like a federal stance against this and do something about it before it becomes into a cancer. So if you enjoyed the video, give me a like, subscribe. Um, hopefully we don't have to deal with cannibals for too long. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.